Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, and today we are going to continue our topic on rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. This will be part nine. But, Chloe Ligar, before I do any teaching, what do I need to do? Pray. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, this is a time, Lord, in world history where people are living in fear. Lord, you have not given us a spirit of fear. But Lord, I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit would fill me right now, enable me to teach this topic, Lord, and that you would give courage to your people and hope, knowing, Lord, that our time here on this world is very limited, but once we are with you, Lord, we have all eternity to spend, and Lord, the thought of sickness and death will be a thing of the past. So, Father, let us focus, God, on those things above, and let us praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. All right, so let us have a quick overview. Now, I believe very soon, in the very near future, we're going to hear a trumpet. I believe the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we, which are alive and remaining, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And at that time, each one of us will stand before the Lord, and he will evaluate our time on earth, how we either did things for him in the flesh or through the power of the Holy Spirit. The eyes of Jesus are as a flame of fire, and as he looks at our works, it's either going to be gold, silver, precious stone, and whatever dross is on that will be burnt up and only the pure treasure will remain, or our works will be wood, hay, and stubble, and the pure gaze of Jesus will burn that to ashes. We will suffer loss, but we ourselves will still be saved, because we are not saved by works, but by grace through faith. But we are rewarded for works, and the works that God did through us. Now, I've been teaching on the five crowns we can wear, or win, and lay at the feet of Jesus. The first one is the martyr's crown, also now known as the crown of life. If you have to give your life for the testimony of Jesus, and you lay it down, God will. The second you go from here to eternity, you will get the crown of life if you do not deny his name. Awesome reward. The next one is the shepherd's crown for pastors and teachers, and I believe even Sunday school teachers teaching the little lambs, those who are in authority over a group of Christians and you're faithfully teaching the word of God to them, you will receive a shepherd's crown. We also have the crown of rejoicing for those who share their faith and lead people to the Lord. Whoever you win to the Lord, they are your crown. And you're going to spend eternity with these people. And they're always going to remember, because of you, I'm not in hell because you told me about Jesus. Thank you. There's the crown of righteousness for those who love his appearing. Again, the reason you love his appearing is because you're living a godly life. Now, today we are going to look at the final crown, which is the incorruptible crown. So, let us look here, and a special thanks to my Facebook friend, Kenya, who let me doodle her here. Uh, she's also in the nursing ministry, so she may be put in harm's way with this virus. So please pray for Kenya that she would be safe and not come into contact with anything that could make her sick. 
I would appreciate that. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Real quick, what that's talking about is, now when we get saved, we still have our old sin nature. And whatever desires you had before Christ, you still have those same desires after you get saved. Now, again, with me, me giving up fornication and adultery and sleeping around, it took a long time for me to actually get there. Now, in that time, if I was serving God, guess what? I was losing rewards because I had not yielded my flesh to the Lord and obeyed Him in that area. So I would fall into fornication, and then I'd say, God, forgive me. The next day, I'd be fornicating again. Again, God, forgive me. And I'd be playing games with God. And I did that for years. But when you come to a time in your life when you say, you know what? My love for God is now stronger because now I've gotten to know Him. And my love for God is now more than my love for pleasure. I'm going to truly repent and not do those things anymore. When I do that, now I am storing up treasure for those things. Because again, my body, I got to beat it into subjection and say, you are not going to do those things that God told you not to do. And it's a daily war. Because believe me, the devil is not going to let you off the hook. He's not going to say, oh, you're a Christian now? Oh, poo-poo. I'm just going to leave you alone and let you enjoy your Christian walk. No, he's going to do everything he can to get you to fall. Because if he can't drag your soul to hell because you now belong to Christ, he's going to make sure you don't have any rewards to enjoy eternity with. No crowns to lay at his feet. So again, even after I have preached to others, if I'm living a ungodly life, I will lose those rewards. So again, don't be a castaway. Live for the Lord. All right, let us continue. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. So all those years that I blew it and wasn't living the right way for the Lord. I don't beat myself up for it. I forget those things that are behind and I'm today, if I blew it, I'm reaching forward and I'm going to say today I'm going to live for Christ. So forget those things, those failures of the past and go forth. Behold, or holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Again, that is Philippians 2.16, and our verse here, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12.1 Again, there is a sin which does so easily beset every single one of us. Some of it, it may be drugs. You are addicted, and you struggle with that. Again, the best thing to do in that case, cut off all connections to people that you used to know when you lived in that lifestyle. If they're still doing drugs, do not hang out with them. If you are an alcoholic, don't go to bars. Common sense. So, again, with me, it was a sexual thing. If you know that you have friends or ex-girlfriends or what have you in the past that will be trying to tempt you into doing those things you know God doesn't want you to do, then you got to cut them off. So that way, when you get to heaven, you stand before God at the Bema seat, you will be able to win those crowns. And, okay, that's all five crowns. So let's look in the Bible and see what we do with those beautiful crowns that we now have. In Revelations 4, it says, verse 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders closed, or sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, I believe the throne room of heaven is made like the human torso. And the four and, or the 24 elders are like our rib cage. We have 24 rib cage, or ribs, and I believe that's what this represents. Out of the throne proceedeth lightnings, and thunders, and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Real quick, the thunder and voices, and that is like our heartbeat. It goes pump, 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 pump. And the, let's see... Okay, the, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. That represents our lungs. Now, on one side, we have three sacs in our lungs, and on the other lung, we have two. And we breathe through our nose and our mouth. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. I believe that represents the paracardium, which is a sack of fluid surrounding our heart. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a lion. Now, these beasts, I believe, represent the gospel. The lion represents Matthew, which shows Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The second beast, like a calf, which is Mark, the suffering servant, is how Jesus is represented there. The word that you see continually in Mark is immediately. Immediately, Jesus did this and that, because you see he's, you know, about serving. The third beast had a face of a man, which is Luke, which represents Jesus as the son of man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, which represents John, which represented Jesus as Jesus, the son of God. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day 
and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, what's cool about the human heart, it has four chambers. And day and night, your heart goes pop, pump, pop, pump, pop, pump, and you never want it to stop. Because if it stops, you're dead. And these four living bees, they cry out day and night, holy, holy, holy. It's like the sound of a heartbeat. Pretty cool. All right. In verse 9, it says, And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sit on or that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Wow. So again, this takes place in heaven. Now imagine the time, if it were any place else, that it would take for the billions of Christians to each of us stand before God and for God to go over every word, every thought, every deed that was done by us. The Bible does say to the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. So while we are experiencing this time with the Lord, Notice that when we are all crowned and we lay these crowns at the feet of God, this is in chapter 4. Now the breaking of the seals that begin the Great Tribulation, that takes place in chapter 6. So again, what is time going to be like in eternity? I don't know. I'm thinking, yeah, we're going to be in heaven for seven years. And then we come back with Jesus to rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. But in heaven, what is that seven years going to be like to us? Is it going to feel like we've been there a million years? Who knows? It's going to be a great time though. Because again, the best part of heaven is being with our God. The Lord who created all things for himself. He made me and you for himself. And now we are with our God, experiencing the joy of the Lord forever. Well, again, I'm praying that this study is giving you hope. Again, with this coronavirus, everybody is freaking out right now. They're not sure about the future. But oddly enough, the word corona, I think somebody told me that it means crown. I'm like, well, that's appropriate then. I'm teaching on the crown. So, hey. All right. So, this is JC Ligar. I pray you were blessed by today's study. And I pray you'll join us as we continue finding out the other things we'll be rewarded for. And also, I'll be teaching on things we do that we could lose rewards for. So, I pray you'll be doing those things to get the rewards and avoiding those things to lose the rewards. JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, who is enjoying three weeks off from school. Awesome for you, huh? Mm -hmm. There is no better place, guys, to be quarantined than the man cave. So, JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. I pray everybody is safe and everybody get into your Bible. Start doing Bible studies. If you're at home and you got nothing else to do, great time to start praying and read the word. God bless you all.